What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today will be the living room vacuuming video with the Bissell PowerForce Compact. Now, this machine, as you can see, not in the best of condition, but, let's see, model 1520. So, this machine is not in the best of condition, and I didn't do a whole ton of work on it because, frankly, it's not worth it. There's nothing collectible about this machine. There's nothing interesting about this machine. It's the cheapest vacuum cleaner that you can buy with a rotating brush that's somewhat a full-size vacuum, although obviously it's a compact vacuum. And these things brand new are $40 and used, you're lucky to get $25 out of these things. So did I strip this thing down to the motor and completely make everything look you know, pretty brand new and spotless? No, because it's not worth it. I cleaned the filter, wiped down some parts of the machine, slapped a new belt on it, and that's all it's going to get. So, it doesn't sound the healthiest, but I don't care. It'll be good enough for someone who needs a $20 vacuum to buy, otherwise it's going in the shed to rot away for parts. So, I did a review on one of these vacuums a long time ago, a purple one, but that review got corrupted and was never able to be uploaded. So, yeah. But to summarize my thoughts on this machine... Now again, I'm usually pretty favorable towards these budget missiles. I generally am a fan of them considering how much vacuum you get for how little price you pay. But in the case of this PowerForce Compact, I think that using this vacuum cleaner is almost as fun as applying hemorrhoid cream. So definitely not something that I recommend to anybody. So yes, while it is a nice compact machine, and I can, I guess, recommend it, if you want something like the Power Force Helix but need something that's smaller and more compact and you only have about 40 bucks to spend on a brand new machine, then sure, go ahead and buy it. But filtration on this machine is not good. And I don't even mean like, oh, oh, it's it's budget, so you expected that. Like it's it's pretty bad. So and it, its performance is about the same as the Power Forces. In fact, the one thing advantage that I will give it is because it has a smaller base on the bottom of it. It actually does have a bit better sealed suction, which is kind of cool. Um, which again, if you have a really small, compact place, or you really need a lightweight machine, this machine weighs about 7-8 pounds, so it's good for that. But that's pretty much the entire review. So if you guys want me to do a full-fledged review on this, then let me know. Otherwise, I'm not going to bother, and this will be the only video you'll see on this machine. So, the previous video that also got messed up for some reason, clearly my phone doesn't want me to record videos on this model of vacuum, but um, it spewed a bunch of dust out of it, so we'll see if it does the same thing now. And also, be warned, this motor is not the healthiest. But again, with how little these things are worth, I can't bring myself to honestly care.
you know what, honestly, even after I kind of, you know, said some mean things about this poor little guy, I will admit that after actually using it again, <laughs> I can understand the appeal of this cute little guy. And, wow, that, okay, you know, take back what I said, because really, how can you be mad at that? This was empty when I started. Got a lot of fine dust, a lot of grit. Yeah, you know, yeah, you can see how it's dirty and stuff, but I bashed on this thing a little bit too much. How can you be mad at something that does that well from such such a tiny little area? Let's see how that filter looks. It's already got some dust on it, which isn't good, but I mean, what are you going to do? So, yeah, this button can be, sometimes this button can be pretty finicky, like right now it's really loose, but usually it's really hard for this to pop back in, but on this unit, also the handle's really loose, I don't know if I can easily show this without the whole machine rocking back and forth, you can tell how much the handle is moving but obviously the reason they do that is because it has the push button mechanism lets you pop this out and use it as a wand much like on the hoover nano cyclonic that i have but yeah you know what i just talked a lot of crap on this poor little guy and um maybe i should have kept my mouth shut before i actually used the machine now don't get me wrong Everything I said about this regarding the filtration and all that is entirely true. But its performance is definitely not, you know, you really can't get mad at it. Because, I mean, for $40, yeah, the thing's cheap. Build quality is not amazing. But it doesn't have to be for $40. Put this thing down. Again, there's there's no weight to this whatsoever. You just pop the thing down. You can tell that belt's squeaking a little bit. Because the thing, the, the problem with Bissels, with a lot of these Bissell brush rolls, is that, like, this brush roll, you can tell the way this is designed, the bristles, while they do stick out from the bottom of the machine... They actually don't stick out that far from the roller because the roller is like con convex. It sticks out. The actual brush strips stick out. I forgot the the name of that those types of brush rollers. It is is it a helix brush roll or is there is there another name for it? I'm blanking on that at the moment. But it doesn't matter what it's called. The point is it actually works rather well. Um, not, as you can tell from the little bits of hair, it's not the best at resisting hair tangles, but again, $40 for a brand new one, 25, you know, 20, $25 used, uh, is what I usually charge for these depending on the condition. And a lot of times you can find these secondhand in thrift stores for $10, $5, and, you know, they might just need a belt or something simple. And for that price, can you really complain? You really can't. I mean, yeah, the filtration is non-existent. Because some people have said, oh, these machines don't have uh, post-motor filters. Now, in the case of the Power Force Helixes, the full-size units, that's absolutely not true. They do have post-motor filters. The problem is that they're built inside of this. You have to disassemble the motor to get to the post-motor filters on the Helix and the bagged units. But on this, I don't believe there, there, I believe there is no post motor filter on this, from what I understand. So, all that carbon dust and all the dust that escapes through this very rudimentary cyclone and the very not that good at filtering top filter and the lackluster seal is all getting blown out of the machine. And if you do let one of these sit for a while while it's dirty and you turn it on, it will spew out a lot of dust. So as it happened twice in the other times that I tried to record this video. 
But I will say that, you know, if they could just improve that filtration, if they could just slap a filter on this thing, give it a better seal. Now, there is a slightly higher-end version of this for, like, around in the $80 range. I believe it's called the AeroSwift Compact. And I'd like to try one of those. Because, truthfully, if there was a machine like this that had better build quality and better filtration, and maybe it was just like, you know, even if it was twice the price as this, if it had the same performance and yet just had the slightly better build quality and the better filtration, that would be a winner. That would be a true winner for someone in like a small apartment or a very, very small house with not a lot of space. Because, I mean, this is a house. What I live in is a house. But this living room, if you if you don't count the upstairs, which is like the entire length of the house, the bedrooms are very tiny. This living room is the biggest area of the bottom floor of the house. And this area you is certainly tolerable for a machine with this low of a width. And the advantage of that, you could see that this could get under the chair, no problem. This could get in between the legs of the coffee table, no problem. It could get behind the chair, get it underneath all these tables. Like, it does a good job of getting into that sort of thing. But, you know, it's just the build quality and the filtration. In my opinion, the filtration is the biggest weakness. Because who gives a crap about build quality? Because this is $40.00. If something breaks on it, these things are so common that you can find any part that you would need. And if you decide you don't want to deal with it, a replacement is so inexpensive that it's just, you know, who cares? Who honestly cares? And yes, I, I will stand by. If you take care of this machine, if you change the belts, clean the filter on this as needed, and you're not throwing this thing like, you know, down onto concrete every time that you use it, this is going to last you 10 years. I don't care who I don't I don't care who doesn't want to hear that. This can last 10 years. Like anything else, unless again and people act as if I'm somehow counting this in. No, if you get one of these and it's dead on arrival out of the box, obviously that's not going to last 10 years. You're going to have to take that, put it back in the box and bring it back to the store. Which is why I always say I don't care if you're buying a $40 appliance or a $400 appliance or a $4,000 appliance. Keep your receipt. So if something happens, because I guarantee you, there are still plenty of times when you get a Dyson that's dead out of the box. When you get a Mila that's dead out of the box. Those happen. Those do happen. Maybe they don't happen as often, but they certainly happen. Which is why you keep your receipt. Once the 30 days have passed and you confirm that your machine is, you know, one that's behaving as it should, then change the belt as you as often as you should, depending on how mu how long you use this. Change the belt every three, six months, depending on how much you use it. Some people would even argue every month, and yeah, you can, but you don't really have to, but you can. I'm sure this belt is stretched out a little bit at this point, and it still did a plenty good job. Clean this filter every month. I mean, I, yeah, I would say month. For this because this filter is so tiny there's already a little bit of dust on it if you had a bigger house uh you know if, if you had like a bigger house and you say vacuum every two weeks then clean this every time you vacuum but otherwise yeah this this will last you this will last you 10 years maybe this will break maybe this will break if you're really rough with it but otherwise you'll be fine and i'm tired of mentioning that over and over again and people keep arguing with me even though they're wrong as, as if as if I haven't done this for, you know, 15, almost 20 years at this point. And, and as if, like, I haven't specialized in fixing these cheapy machines. These can last a decade if you take care of them. I'm tired of the people who try to say... Now, don't get me wrong. Look, I'm getting a very premium vacuum that's supposed to be arriving tomorrow. And I'm greatly looking forward to it. I don't want to spoil what it is. But I'm looking forward to getting some more premium machines into the studio. But look... Look, you can make these things last if you take care of them. The problem is most people don't because these are cheap. Because this is so easy to replace, so many people will buy this and the second the belt breaks, they'll throw it away. They'll just throw it away and get a new one. And you, Ruby! And you don't need to do that. Anyways, my dog is barking at the neighbors and yeah, so I started off this video pretty negative, but honestly, now that I've used this thing again, 
it's still not my favorite. It's still not going to stay in the collection because there's no reason for it to. But, um, yeah, I, I can understand why these things sell so well and why so many people like them. And obviously I've used them plenty of times in the past as well. So, yeah, pretty solid little machine for $40, definitely worth the price. But, um, yeah, if you guys like this video, if, if like 10 people like this video, I'll do a full review on this machine. So if you guys are actually interested or just drop it in the comments if you actually are interested in seeing a full review on this. Or is it honestly like not worth it? You know, and of course these things are so cheap that, you know, if, if people want me to review this and by the time I hear, I see that and I've already, uh, sold it, then I'll probably just buy one because it's not like, it's not like they're uncommon. In fact, I have another one of these with the motors, but the cords cut on it. So I'm not sure, excuse me, that snuck up on me. I'm not sure if this, uh if that motor is still good or if I'm just going to just throw the thing away or use it for parts. But, um, you know, is it even worth putting a new cord on it? Probably not because, again, you know, if you put a $10 cord on it, it's a $20 vacuum. You know, again, on a good on a good day, this is a $25 vacuum used. And I'm sure plenty of people would even say that that's too much for these given double that price is what they go for new. And uh, same story with that little Dirt Devil that I got recently. If you guys want to see a service video on that, Obviously, I've already done all the work that I'm going to do on this. But if you guys want to see a service video on this, uh, let me know. And I may film the service video of this. Since I know a lot more people have been requesting that I actually do repair videos, like where I'm actually documenting how I fix up a machine and what it looks like after it's been fixed. Obviously, I fixed this one a long, long time ago. Like, this thing's been sitting uh, at my dad's house for like a year at this point, And I only just now got around to grabbing it and doing some videos on it before I get it sold. I've already listed both of these machines, so they may disappear at some point. But, um... Ruby, stop barking. There's no, there's no one there. No, no one's gonna hurt you. It's literally just the neighbors across the street. Don't be growling. Yeah, Dad's not even home. I don't know why you're growling. Stop it. Stop it or you're gonna get booped. I'm going to pelt you with the squeaky. You want the squeaky? Anyways, this is Intelltech Studio signing out with my living room vacuuming video of the Bissell Power Force Compact 1520. Yeah, so this, this sending, actually, this is the older style of this. I forgot about that because the only, the only difference between the old, old and the new style that's this design is they... You know, the text was vertical like this, and they made it horizontal on the new ones. There's no real difference there. But yeah, so, Power Force Compact. Oh, oh, I just, did I just break the handle lock? Nope, I didn't. So, Power Force Compact. Teletech Studios. See you guys in the next video. I also have attachments for it too, but I just haven't, they're buried somewhere. Because it just, just uses the same dusting brush and crevice tool from you know, whatever other random things. I think the sanitaire has has this stubby little crevice tool, doesn't it? Yeah, look at that. That goes right there. So, anyway guys, until next video, signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Ugh, I don't know why. Today's just been a really crappy day for some reason. I don't know why. So, sorry if I'm not as exuberant as I usually am in these videos. And sorry for the lack of videos the last, like, day or two. But, uh, yeah. So, Powerverse Compact and uh, new vacuum is coming soon. Uh, should be arriving tomorrow, so hopefully that'll be the next video. Or, again, if I get 10 likes on this video or if I get 10 comments requesting it, then I'll do a full review on this machine. And if I get it for this as well, uh, actually, not comments, but just likes, because that can be annoying after a while. But um, then I'll do the video on reviewing this because I thought I had reviewed this but it turns out the machine that's similar to this that I reviewed was actually the uh um what is it called Endura light the quick light no this is the quick light what's the name of the I forgot what it was but it was the one that I got brand new uh the, the greenish turquoise one that I got a while ago you know what I'm talking about 
So I got that to do a review on. It turns out I already reviewed that machine. So if people have wondered, hey, why haven't you have you reviewed that yet? It's because I already did it. And I somehow forgot because I reviewed the normal red one. But um, it was the one that's like the Breeze, but it's uh, the smaller ver version of it. I don't know why the name is blanking on me right now. But the uh, point is, is that it was the, uh, whatever it was. Why why can't I remember that name? I'm going to look that name up real quick. Okay, I found it. It was the Power Express. That's what I did the uh, the video on, which I got the new one. That was like a Black Friday deal or whatever. I got the new one, and I didn't even realize that I already did a review on the exact same vacuum. So, that's my bad. So, don't I don't think there's any reason on redoing that review. Unless, maybe I'll go back and watch that review. Maybe that was a crappy review, because it was a while ago. But we'll see. So, that's why I haven't used that machine yet. Because I already did the review on it. And by the time I realized that, it was too late to return it. So, yeah. Uh, wouldn't be the first time I've done that, bought a machine that I thought I didn't have, and turns out I already did, but, um, yeah, so, if someone wants to see a review on this Dirt Devil, then, or on this machine, I may review those uh, at some point, so, yeah, this is Intel Tech Studio signing up, I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day, uh, happy soon-to-be Friday, as it is Thursday when I upload this, and uh, to the random person from Ohio who keeps calling me, that's obviously a robocall, please stop it. It's really annoying. And you almost cut off the video with the stupid robocall. So, anyways, this is Intelltech Studio signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace.